Hi everybody, this is my first IT video with audio. I hope it goes well. The last video I uploaded on this subject was the ThinStation 5.2.4 DevStation install. That is a pretty straightforward install um, with the ISO, a virtual machine, and it just runs through all the defaults. Uh, some details in there, but it's fairly straightforward, and now I'm, I'm trying this with audio. So hopefully I don't bore everybody to death, and it will, it will make sense. Um, I do want to, to thank Don Cup Jr. and the rest of the Thin Station team. They've been doing great work with this open source project um, it's a it's it's a it's a great project they've been doing it for a number of years i've been using thin station since 2012 version 2.2.2 h and it's it's very helpful in creating a machine or re being able to recycle a machine that was going to be recycled into a working thin client that will connect to remote desktop or Citrix. So moving on, what I'd like to go over on the video is the basics of thin station with what we have on the image from that we already worked on which is first thing I want to go over is the readme file you find that in the thin station folder Don and the thin station team makes this very they, they try to put everything in the thin station folder on the file system so we open this I don't think I can make that any bigger with an edit but basically why I wanted to bring this up was for the installation the installation has us run our set up for ch root and this will take some time because it's going to expand I believe it downloads we'll, we'll see what happens when we run it but it will expand the binary packages into the right place as you see on um, in the thin station folder I, I do not see any of the configuration files will We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens when we run a ch root. I see a, a link to it here, but I I like running it from the desktop as there is a terminal ch root. And now definitely go through this on your own time and go through and, and read the as much documentation as we can as you can before you start with anything but since I've been through this a number of times I know this is the first step so so to run ch root let's go into terminal then station and I'm using the tab completion in Linux that will automatically finish when I get started. So this here should set up our ch root session. And there's, there's not much to it. So, 
we did the README. What I really want to speak about next before we go through and build, because according to the README, we're installing and we're running. And really that's the next step. That's that's the only thing you have to do. But I, I like doing things in a orderly process and I'd like to go over my process that should help you when you're building these images because it's been developed over time. And my basic process is I will document everything in a running log file. So I did start an example of what that looks like here and I started now this was just copying and pasting but if I'm making an updates or an edits I will update it in here if I have to find something from the thin station message board I'll paste the link to it in here and then I'll be able to reference this in the in the future and this is plan this is what I'm planning on doing to to do our build and I left some space and I used HTML style closing and then this just gets built and it's a long very long file that that you end up with but it's it's helpful for going back when you're starting over from scratch. So, and in the config files, which I'm going to go over, I also, I note, I sign and date all of the changes in the config files. Um, so documentation is very important when you're, when you're working on this, uh, when, once you get to a point where you have good configuration files, uh, you might have them documented and say it's version 10 or version 20, but then you can go back and see what it took you to get from step, step version 1 to version 20. Everybody does things different, this works for me. And what I do is I back up major image revisions. That includes the, the boot images. Well, now, now first, what I consider a major revision is the first one that you get to work. That's great. Boot, make sure that one's backed up. If you get a, your first PC to work, another PC, you get Citrix working. That's going to be another configuration file. So by the time you get something that works with RDP, and it works on the right resolution and the vid right video drivers, you might be up to your fifth revision just to get a proof of concept to work. But it's it's trial and error and it's not it's not terribly complex even with minimal Linux administration, which I had come from a, a Windows network background. So and also just if you were closing for the end of the day, your major revisions will end for, for, for that day. And that also helps for when you're documenting too, if you're shutting things down, you just know a little bit where you left off. But the backup does consist of your config files, which there are two that I'm going to go over short, shortly, and also the boot files, really everything that's needed for building a new system. As you get more involved with Citrix, you and I will, I'm planning on showing how there are some issues with uh, certificates and you have to include them in your in your build. Not terribly complicated, but um, it's something most people are able to piece together. I'm that's why I'm trying to show everybody to get them on the right path quicker of, of what I've learned. And then if you have it on a VM or a regular PC, just get it off the network or onto your network so then it's on a off-site backup or cloud storage, however you do your backups. Um, 
just get it off of the actual running box because if your running box gets corrupt, that's that's not going to be good with if you have all your back backups on your your running dev station as we're calling it. I have set up a Windows WDS server to boot on to basically do a dual boot so I use the PXE images I copy them over with FTP and then I make backups on that box too that's what we do but I get a new PXE boot I will boot it with VirtualBox or a real PC if I'm working on drivers and video cards I was re recently working with dual video cards trying to set those up and I was I was booting with a real PC for that so that is the process I'm gonna stop this video and make sure I'm getting audio okay so the next thing I'd like to go over are the two configuration files that you will be very familiar with for making your image builds. There are more and I'm not going to get into those in depth right now but basically these two configuration files are for your what is going to be set on your image build and there is also networking that is there is also a configuration file on the network there, there's other ways to do it as some configuration settings can come off of DHCP but primarily I I use a TFTP server to pull a host file or host name resolution difference terminal hosts um, they could be all set through a TFTP server so you do not have to constantly update uh, your images if, if your if you get a new RDP server or Citrix server you are just editing your configuration files and not building a full new image So on a fresh system, there are, we have a link to the build config and I'm going to take notes for you, build config or conf then station .conf .build time. The build config is the primary config file. Now this is just a link and I believe the link goes to this example and right here it link to build.conf example. Since I'm going to be getting into this I don't want to deal with that. I'm going to keep that example copy, paste, let's rename it, build conf, so now we have the original and we have the build conf, I don't want to see one opened already, and let's see what we have, so don't be intimidated by this file. Now I'm not sure how this is going to look on the video. It's unfortunately with Notepad++ I could change my text size and I'm not able to do that here. But 
this video is trying to just show you how you can run this with the defaults and make a working image and then you get more comfortable and start adding drivers for your PCs and I plan on going over that in the future so some of the basics they tell you how to run your build you run this from your ch root environment and I didn't do a good job explaining ch root because it seemed to be set up on this machine already um, or there wasn't much setup like in the past so it's basically a, a jailed system where you can run a completely independent Linux environment and that's how that's how the thin station team was able to build the thin station development or dev station environment for us um, where they can still remain an independent operating system for with uh, the start menu um, FileZilla, Chrome, that is complete, completely independent of your ThinStation build. So everything on the regular file system, it's, it's walled off. I'm not going to go into the depths of that because I can't speak at it from an expert perspective, but I'm just trying to give my input on this video to, to admins in my level so they can try this out and try to use it in their environments. But I want everybody to read through what is happening here on on your on in the build config. This the build config first is the one of two configuration files that we will be editing. This goes through the everything that is needed for your image. It will place it on the image. So if it is anything like when you're building a, a Windows XP or Windows 7 image, um, it's basically like when you are installing a software package, if you have to install Chrome or if you have if you want to include a word processor, a antivirus on your image, however you, whatever you want to place on your image, say an internal software package, if that's going to be on your image, you have to do that manually. In this case, and then you snap an image. With Linux, within Station, this is different. And I think more of the newer Windows 7 uh, images are built similar to this but I, I haven't done much of those myself but what we're doing is adding modules that will be placed on the image so in, in, in here it's separated for hardware wireless file system support and as we go down, different packages, one for network time, and they're, they're grouped together to, to really make sense. Now, even though the config file is 100, 109 lines, many of it is mm -hmm. going to be commented out, or it's, it's also just documented well. So by default, I'm going to leave everything just the way it is with the drivers and the languages. Now we get into applications. We free RDP is what is what it is the very basic or a working remote desktop uh, application for Linux. 
I can't uh, say which one is better right now, free RDP or our desktop. Um, I know they the, each have their different qualities, and I, I, I'd have to look at my config to see what worked for me. But this is where you would go through and add if you have a, a 2x environment. If you do not want to have Chrome on your image, because then you'd have to have a proxy server set up and it would have to be locked down, you, you would disable this. But I'm leaving everything default just to show you what, how it works out of the box. Um, this is our Windows managers. Everything is a GUI install. And w when I started FinStation, there, there was not a GUI by default. It was a, a text-based interface. And at first I missed that, but now I see the flexibility that we have with the XFWM, the X-Free Window Man Manager 4. It's a very powerful and lightweight man manager. My images, my PXE images are usually under 100 megs, which are very nice for a full operating system. Um, your cups, if you work with Linux a little bit, you'll learn that's a, that's a printing server. I haven't done any printing with this yet. In my environments, I don't have to worry about that so much, at least yet. So I plan on using defaults. They slid up somehow for some reason. So fonts, the default passwords, and naturally, yes, you will change all of these. Um, default boot resolution, that will work on this machine. You can have a wa desktop wallpaper, which that's something I like to do for my thin station images. But basically, the defaults will work. And I did say there was two configuration files. I don't think we need the readme file. Well, it does tell you how to build it, so I'll leave it open for that. Now, this is not a link. This is the second file that it uses, and these are, most of these are configurable through the, your TFTP server as well. And just Looking over this, I believe we're going to set a lot of these, uh, just leave the defaults here, um, even though the time zone is incorrect. Um, this is one thing that I've noticed that I like to comment out is the, the brightness. Um, I don't need my screens being any darker. Uh, but that's, you comment it out here or you leave it and then com and set it in your TFTP. And TFTP is not listed in here, but this, well, this is one of the, this is what your TF, that would be on your TFTP server. Sorry about that. That's the station host example. All right, well, let's, let's make this happen. This video is going too long. So from all the defaults, I didn't update one thing except copy the, the link. I will run the build from the chroot environment. So let's see, that's where we're at. And we're going to cd build. and. paste what I had and it will it will yell if it doesn't like it but I'm gonna keep this full screen so you can see some of what's happening uh, just oh it's installing Chrome let's see if that actually downloads Oh, 
that's going. I can note in here, we may want to delete the shortcut. And what we're doing right now is the default is it defaults to a VMware workstation ISO image. You can download VMware player for Windows, probably Linux. Um, no, I'm not sure about the Linux part, but you could probably convert it and then use VirtualBox. So, but what I what I do is I consider this the first step when you're getting used to thin station. If you can make this image, then you can do more. I'll do more. Uh, it's going to download more drivers. If you can download, if you can make this happen with, with VMware Workstation, you could make this happen then with VirtualBox and then with a real PC. I'll get more in depth with that. You can look at the Thin Station Wiki for more information also for the th and also the Thin Station mailing list. Doing its thing. I had to download a few drivers. Some of them were not necessary for the VMware image, but it's it's starting. It's giving you a good starting point. Okay, that concludes what happens when our image is created. We we now have. Uh, took a, a couple minutes for the first image to be created. Um, there was a number of downloads that had to be done. Uh, luckily, there were some, nothing errored out completely. There were some warnings. Um, I'm gonna have to see if everything everything worked to be sure, but I, I think by the time it comes to you and, and me, the, uh, most of the bugs are worked out as, as far as just the defaults go. So now what we have, and the next step of, 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 of the process is once you, well, I guess the process, you know, is also making the image, you know. build an image. So once we're images is built, then we look under boot images. This is normally where I'm after. And when I look at detailed list and this and this, now that's 200 meg image. Normally mine are around 100. Um, maybe that's due to Chrome and, and some of the other defaults that were in there. But these are the two files that you need on a WTS server or plain TFTP server to pull down from a PC doing PXE boot. Alternatively, there are ISO images, SysLinux. I've used these files to make USB bootable drives and also hard drives. Um, hard drive management wasn't something I wanted to deal with, but it was good for proof of concept once you 
got used to that, um, the process, which is cumbersome, but you are, are able to put it on a hard drive too. Um, I'm all PXE now in my deployment. It's, it's, it's really the way to go. So the next step is getting this ISO to my machine. I am going to fire up my FTP server on my own machine here and get this file copied over. Okay, so I have copied the FinStation ISO image using FileZilla client on the FinStation dev box running under VirtualBox, Oracle's virtual, box, virtual solution to then copy it to my own PC. And I have a file here and an FTP folder on my C drive. Just to say, simple folder for me to copy it to. And the next step is to use VMware Player to create a virtual machine to run this ISO. So, dollar disk image, and this is similar, not the right thing. Fenstation ISO. It thinks it's an installer, but it's a diskless operating system. So you'll see in the next we'll label this in station 524. And we can't say no disk. Um, maybe we can go something 0.01, but I'm just going to leave one gig. It's probably not even going to look at the drive. One file is simpler, so um, just for speed's sake, let's give it 512 megs of RAM, and let's, let's see. Oh, I didn't, what, normally what I like to do on their networking is bridge mode, and bridge mode will give you a true IP address on your own network. It's completely up to you how you want to do this. If you're just doing a proof of concept, it really doesn't matter much. But if you are trying to narrow down for troubleshooting, it's, it's much easier when you're on your own network. So let's, let's see what happens here when we turn it on. See that my my Fitbit plugged into my tower. Now there's no power on scripts. If you have configured a custom power on script, uh, make sure it contains no errors. Where that might be useful in some environments, but not what we're doing today. So that's it. We booted from an ISO file with VMware Player. That is, well, let me get the mouse in the VM. You'll see our networking is working. That's not a, it's not a cached image. Thanks again, Don. Donald Cup Jr. for and the rest of the Fen Station team for what they have done. They've done um, amazing work putting this whole whole thing together. And now as you can see on our desktop we have an icon for that says MS Windows, but that will give give us our free RDP session. I don't have one to test right now, but it's it's going to work. Um, this is something you can do in your environment with your servers, uh, your business or your school or how, whatever you're doing this for, even if you're doing it at home. Um, I'm not sure how people will use this, but 
um, you can use FreeRDP. Um, what I use once I am more configured is I have a TFTP server with config files for multiple servers. So you might see one server for accounting. You might see one server for management. You might see one server for call center. You might, ho however, the, la the the servers are labeled and what their functions are. They will they will show up here, and you can even configure them so there's only certain servers shown up by certain people um, based on the configuration file on the TFTP server. And the, the same can be done with uh, the websites. Now this includes Google Chrome. Uh, that was all default configs just to see if it would work, and it did. So I think that's a, a good summary of, of what a default thin station build looks like and how to to get one going and I'll be including videos in the future but as as I said earlier the next steps would be getting into the configuration files the, the first one being the build configuration and then just trying to through trial and error seeing what drivers work and then when you get more advanced there is a hardware listener that you can look up and I believe it's commented in here the hardware listener script will then tell you what drivers that you need to install so then just like there is a VMware ma machine here you'll have a machine for your Dell XY3000 and your, you know, your whatever PCs that you have and your model numbers, you can have them set just like this VMware box is or the, this, this Weiss box is here. So that's, uh, that's really the next step. I don't want to get into that too much. Um, if you want to work ahead, and that, that's really the next the next step for everybody is then trying to get this to work on a real machine. And you could do the ISO. Um, a PXE boot is is really what your goal will be. So looking in how to do that also will be helpful. So then you could be a lot more flexible with your images as it updates you're not updating cds or flash drives but you know for experimentation and, and learning usb drives and cds are you're going to be going through quite a quite a few cds and and burning or making some flash drives with uh you boot and however you determine how to do it um, until you make that leap to PXE, but once you do, that's the way. That's the way to go. I think that's it for today, everybody. Everybody, want to make sure I covered everything. In my notes. We did our VMware and we built an image. We didn't copy it, but we built it. So, what I do like to do, since I did get that thing booting, I, I'll show you some of my process. Before I conclude, which I like to have a folder first boot, and now some of my I think this will copy between the VM. Not without uh, some configuration on the blog, but basically the first build log will be here. Then station backups, first loop, and we'll just call that build log. It's not what I want there. 
So this is what the dog would look like. This is basically all we did was we ran the, the CH root setup, we did a build, it downloaded a bunch of files, and we it worked. That's why we're logging it. So the next thing I like to include, now the whole boot images folder isn't completely necessary. I've noticed that it will run me out of space if I if I keep doing this, because I just use 500 meg or so to do that. 850 meg, so that'll burn up space quickly, even though I have a 60 gig partition. Uh, anyway, the big things that you want to include are the build configuration and these near build destination build time. Uh, you might want to do configs and then as you and then everything all you need right there to, to build a new system is this one folder you could reverse engineer and, and bring back the config files and your back in business um, as you get more advanced there'll be certificates there'll be maybe some other Citrix downloads that you'll have in here but that is that's the majority of it that's that's really what wraps up a, a complete build is backing it up it might be tedious but it is it's very important and then you can reference what you did last time um because you might not pick this up for six months down the road if it actually works well for you once you get your drivers installed on your pc then you might not have any reason for updating but uh, when you can go back to this in six months or hand it off to somebody else, you can say this is everything I did, and and here you go. But that's really the last part of of the of the of the process is doing a backup, and I think that's everything today. Thanks, everybody.